Hi, chemistry students. Let's look at a, kin a kinetics uh, example problem on the method of initial rates. There's a follow-up to this with a more com complex reaction, but this one will help you get started. And uh, so try to do this one, watch this one, and then try the uh, assessment at the end. And if you can do that, then move on to watch the more complex version of this, uh, of this method of initial rates. So what we're going to be doing is looking for a thing called the rate law. And we know that the, re the rate of a reaction, that is how fast the reaction happens, it will depend on the temperature of the system and the concentration of the reacting species. And this rate law that we're going to be looking for, it will express both of the dependences that you have, okay, both of these on temperature and concentration in one relationship. And by relationship, I mean an equation. Uh, a reminder for you here is that bulk reactions can only, um, you can only get a rate law for them by doing experiments. You can't look at the stoichiometry. So don't look at the balanced reaction when it's a bulk reaction. Um, so for elementary reactions, there'll be a different method, but that'll be something we'll discuss later. So for now, let's talk about this generic rate law and what it's all about. Here's an example reaction. It's the dimerization of uh, uh, of a compound C4H6. Uh, this is part of what's called a Diels-Alder reaction. Uh, that's what you'll learn about in organic chemistry later on. So it's a dimerization because two molecules are turning into one. They're dimerizing. Um, so here we see this thing called the rate law, and the rate law is everything that's encompassed inside that circle right there, that oval. And you must write the whole thing. If you're asked to write a rate law, it's all of this. The word rate goes in there, an equal sign, then K times every reactant or catalyst, all right, raised to some power. Each one will be raised to its own power, X, Y, Z, whatever it is, just some power that we'll need to find by doing experiments. This uh, rate, by the way, is a number. We know how to calculate that. Uh, so that's all it is. Don't forget it. Uh, the X thing, this power, is called the order with respect to whichever chemical we're looking at. And it expresses how important the concentration of this particular compound is to the overall rate of reaction. Uh, finally, the K is called the rate constant. And it's what, it, it contains the temperature dependence, and it's something that will be discussed later on. All right, so we're going to be using the method of initial rates which, uh, of course, will help us reach our goal of determining what the rate law is. And essentially, we're going to look at how the reaction changes right away, the initial rate that we get from mixing some chemicals together or allowing them to react. And we'll be able to find this uh, rate law by, in the method of initial rates by finding a ratio of rates from two different experiments. And in this particular example, it's very simple. We only have one substance reacting, as you saw. Therefore, there's no real thought process that needs to go into this. However, if there's, multiple if there's multiple reactants, you have to look for experiments where only one substance changes at a time. And the other video that I have on this, which is the more complex reaction, will go through that in detail. So here you, see, here you can see some experimental data and our reaction. And just remind you that we can write, to, write from a reaction immediately, without even thinking, the um, the rate law, the generic rate law for it. So remember, it's not stoichiometric. It's not based upon the stoichiometry. We don't know what the X is, and it can include any reactant or catalyst. In this case, there's only one reactant, so it's going to look just like that. Rate is equal to K times C4H6's concentration raised to some power X. We can choose any trials we want in this particular instance because they all refer to the same compound changing and only that compound changing. So let's take a look at trials one and two. We'll focus on that data. Trial three is something that we don't need to worry about for this particular example, but we could. All right. And now that we have this, this rate law and we have, um, I'm sorry, the generic rate law, each trial can be given its own generic rate law. Notice that I've given this a subscript one, and the concentration over here is subscript one, to, to just tell myself it's from trial one. And of course, this two and this two are from the trial two. So what we're going to do is we're going to use this information now and make a ratio of rates that will allow us to find x. And here's where we're going to have some fun with some math. All right. So here's where we left off in the last slide. 
And if you take a good close look at this, we've got, uh, we're, we're focused on our data here and we're focused on our two uh, generic rate laws. And what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna make a ratio of the rates. Here we go, I've made a ratio of rate one divided by rate two, that's a ratio. And since rate one is equal to K times C4H6, I can plug that in and I can do the same for rate two. If you take a look, you can immediately see that K over K cancels out. So this simplifies greatly. And one of the nice things about exponents is that if two things divided by each other are raised to the same exponent, we can just make them their, their ratio raised to that power. The reason we do this is because we can immediately simplify things by taking the natural log of both sides. If I take the natural log of both sides, I get the natural log of rate one over rate two, that's from right here. And now, now if I take the natural log of this side, I get natural log of that raised to the x. However, another aspect of the log algebra is, if I've got a log, a natural log or any other kind of log, any power can be brought down as a multiplier. So right here, I brought down the x as a multiplier. The end result is something where I can rearrange this to solve for x. And if you take a look at this, this, this very initial left-hand side where it says the, the order is equal to the natural log of the ratio of the rates divided by the natural log of the ratio of the concentrations is how we solve every one of these problems. In the other video, I talk more about that. But just keep in mind that you can, you can skip all these steps and go directly to a relationship that looks like this one that I'm circling right now with the cursor. From here, all we do is plug in the data from trial one and two. So the rate from trial one, the rate from trial two goes right where it should be. And here's the concentrations. They go right where they should be. When I do the calculation, I find this number is two. And what that means is I can now tell you what the exact, what the exact rate law is. It's not a generic rate law anymore. This is the rate law for this reaction. And what we would say is this reaction is second order with respect to C4H6. That's how we would say this. So rate is equal to K times C4H6 concentration raised to the second power. We're not done yet though. We need to find out what K is with the rate constant. And so we have our rate law. And to finish this up, it's very simple. We're gonna choose any trial and I'm gonna choose trial one but I could have chosen two or three, it doesn't matter. And all I do is I rearrange now, rearrange to isolate K on one side, which means solve for K. So I've done that. And now I just go ahead and simply plug in my values from trial one. So as you see, the initial rate, 4.6. The initial concentration is 0.22. If I plug that in, then I come up with uh, 95 molarity to the minus one second of the minus one is my units. Notice, this is very important. K has different units every time you do this and it's based upon the overall order. So you need to keep track of these units and do the math to calculate and cross out units. You can do algebra on units. All right, so now that you have uh, a little taste of how to do this, I want you to try to answer these questions. If you can do these without any issue, then you've really learned how to do the basics of the um, method of initial rates. When you're finished, move on and try the next video, which is of the more complex reaction. Thanks.